Fine, let's see this. They have given a relation and also they have given the functional dependencies which hold on this relation, right? Which hold on this relation and they have named this functional dependency set as F, right? This the functional dependency set as F. See, one thing is obvious from this, we are not actually mentioning all the possible functional dependencies, right? For example, if you take this, since we have A implies B and B implies C, obviously even A implies C also holds in F, right? A implies C also holds in F. Also, we have something called as A implies A. This will also hold in F, right? Also, B implies B will also hold in F. Also, A, B implies A will also hold in F, right? This is a trivial functional dependency, right? You know that trivial functional dependencies always hold. This is not a trivial functional dependency, but it also holds in F, but we are not actually mentioning it explicitly, right? We have mentioned only two functional dependencies here explicitly, and these are the functional dependencies which we have inferred from this functional dependency, right? Though they are, these things are not mentioned explicitly, these functional dependencies also hold on F, right? They also hold on F. So from this, we can come to a conclusion that Though we have mentioned only two functional dependencies here in our functional dependency set, still we have few more functional dependencies which can be inferred from this, right? Which can be inferred from this. Now, in case if we find out, in case if we find out all possible functional dependencies which can be inferred from F, then we can say that as closure of F, right? We can also say that as closure of F, closure of a functional dependency set. See, we have already seen what is meant by closure of an attribute, right? Closure of an attribute is nothing but set of all attributes which can be which can be functionally derived from that attribute, right? That is what we mean by closure of an attribute. Whereas closure of a functional dependency set is nothing but set of all functional dependencies which are possible on F, right? F is a set of functional dependency and closure of F is nothing but set of all functional dependencies which hold in F, right? Which hold in F. So in case if I find out all the functional dependencies possible in F and I write this, then I can say that as closure of F, right? Now how to find out all the functional dependencies which hold on F? For that we use something called as closure operation, right? See, this is another application of closure operation. We have already seen two or apply, three applications of closure operation, right? You can even include this as the fourth one, which means given a functional dependency set, we can find out F closure using the closure operation, which means we can find out the set of all possible functional dependencies in this functional dependency set using the closure operation on an attribute. Let's see how to find out. For example, see, I need to find out, I need to find out closure of A, right? I need to find out closure of A. What is closure of A? Closure of A will definitely contain A, fine. It will also contain B. Since I have A, I can take B. Since I have B, I can take C, right? This is what closure of A will contain. What about closure of B? Closure of B, closure of B will definitely contain B, fine. Since I have B, I can take C, right? Since I have B, I can take C. Now then I let, let me find out the closure of C. Closure of C, Closure of C, this C, if you want, you can even put them in a set, right? That is what we have been following so far. You can put them in a set, fine. Closure of C will only contain C, right? We don't have B, we don't have A, so we can't take the right hand side. Now let's find out closure of closure of two attributes, right? We have find out closure of single attribute so far. Let's find out the closure of two attributes. Now why are we finding this? Using this, we will be able to find out closure of F. Right? Anyway, let's see this. Let me take A, B. Closure of A, B will contain A, B and C for sure. Why? If closure of A is having A, B, C, obviously closure of A, B will also have A, B, C. Right? It is very logical. Fine. What about closure of B, C? Closure of B, C will contain B and C. Right? Anything else? No. Right? We can't get A from this. What about closure of what, of, what about closure of AC? It will contain all the attributes. It will contain all the attributes, right? Because closure of A is having all the attributes. Obviously, closure of AC will also contain all the attributes. Now, let's find out 
closure of A, B and C. Right closure of A, B, C. It will again contain A, B and C. So we have checked closure for all possible sets of attributes. Right, which means we have taken single attributes at first. Then we went for two attributes, which means set of all possible two attributes over here. They are A, B, A, C and B, C. Then we went with size three. Right, A, B, C. We can't go for size four. Why? Because we have only three attributes. Right. We have taken all the closures. Now from this, we can get all the functional dependencies which hold on F. For example, from from this we can get come to a conclusion that we have A implies A, A implies B, and A implies C. Right. We got A implies A, A implies B, A implies C. Why? If closure of A is having all these attributes, then obviously. A implies A, A implies B, A implies C will definitely hold, right? Similarly, we can find for this. It will have B implies B and B implies C, right? This will have C implies C. This will have A B implies A, A B implies B, and A B implies C, right? A B implies C. Then again, here we can find out something called as B C implies B. And B C implies C, right? B C implies C. Similarly, here we have A C implies A, A C implies B, and A C implies C. Similarly, from this we can write that A B C implies A, A B C implies B, and A B C implies C, right? We have found out all the functional dependencies. See one more important point: we can still go for more functional dependencies. How? What we can do is we can join them. For example, I can take this as A implies A B C, right? This is also a functional dependency which holds. This is what we mean by union, right? Here I have I have taken these three and I have union them to get this. Similarly, I can also write A implies A B, right? I can also write A implies A C. Similar way, I can do all. I can I can create lots of functional dependencies from them, right? I can create lots of functional dependencies from them. Now, in case if I take all these things, in case if I take all these things, we can still create more functional dependencies, right? For example, I can create A B implies B C, right? I have A B implies B, A B implies C. I'm unioning both to get A B implies B C. Similar way, similar way, we can get lot of functional dependencies. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all of them in a single set, just like this. Here we have written in a single set, right? Similar way, we can write all of them in a single set, and I can say that I can I can name that as F plus closure of F, right? I can rename this as closure of F. What do you mean by closure of F? Closure of F is nothing but set of all functional dependencies which hold on F, right? This is the set of functional dependencies they have explicitly mentioned. But apart from the functional dependencies which are explicitly mentioned. In case if we write even the functional dependencies which can be inferred from the F, then we can say this as closure of F, right? So this is what we mean by closure of a functional dependency set. We have already seen closure of an attribute, right? This is nothing but closure of a functional dependency set. See, nobody is going to ask you, which means nobody is going to give you a functional dependency set and will ask you to find out closure of F, which means they are not going to ask you. to find out all possible functional dependencies it is going to take lot of time right you cannot write all of them but one thing you can do is given a functional dependency some functional dependency for example let us assume a b implies c given a functional dependency they can ask you a question whether this functional dependency holds on f or not right that can be easily found out why how see what you can do is you can take the closure of left hand side right for example you can take closure of left hand side and in case if it contains the right hand side here it is c in case if it contains this then we can definitely say that this functional dependency holds on f or this functional dependency will definitely be present in the closure of f right in the closure of f that is what that is how we can find out whether a functional dependency can be inferred from f or not right that is important that question can always be asked nobody will ask you to find out all possible functional dependencies but there might come questions like given a functional dependency they given a functional dependency set they can give you a functional dependency and ask whether this functional dependency holds on this functional dependency set or not 
what you can do is you can take the closure of left hand side and check whether right hand side is present in this or not which means the attributes in right hand side are present in this in case if all the attributes in right hand side are present in this then you can say that this functional dependency holds if not present then you can say this functional dependency doesn't hold on f right fine